the US Navy is planning to integrate the naval strike missile onto at least one amphibious warfare ship. This is part of a larger effort to look at ways to increase the firepower of these types of warships. Though the exact technical details are not available since it's still being conceptualized, it's likely that deck-mounted proprietary canister launcher could be used to get the job done. Viewers may note that the US Navy has 11 San Antonio class warships in active service and naval strike missile has already been integrated into literal combat ship or LCSs through a proprietary canister launcher. This is an interesting move and comes after the San Antonio class warship USS Portland was outfitted with a laser weapon. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how US Navy plans to augment the firepower of the San Antonio class landing platform dock with the addition of the naval strike missile. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free to play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time as a bonus. The US has been fighting with adversaries that have no or very small navy like Iraq or Afghanistan. All this while Russia and China were not on the radar. America was focusing on military assets that were more in line with these battles, like the development of drones. But things have changed in the last decade. Russia and China have emerged as critical threats. Both of these countries have strong navies and are actively pursuing ways to counter the US Navy by developing a wide variety of anti-ship missiles. Even second-tier powers like Iran has been pursuing the development of a wide range of anti-ship missile. So it's paramount that the US warship has the ability to take out opponents. The move also aligns with the US Navy's distributed lethality concept that aims to disperse firepower across different platforms. US Marine Corps Major General Tracy King, the head of the Expeditionary Warfare Division within the Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, has outlined the concept. King said, We have these magnificent, 600 foot long, highly survivable LPD 17s. He added, I suspect what you will see in the next year that we will probably test fire a system off an L class ship and let the fleet play around with it build up the doctrine on how we will use it and to confirm or deny whether it's worth the expense, which we think it is. We need the operators to confirm that." He explained further, The LPDs need the ability to reach out and defend themselves and sink another ship. Major General King explained, It's not from the aspect of using them as a strike platform. It will drastically increase their survivability if the enemy has to honor that threat. LPD-17 is the hull number of the first San Antonio class landing platform dock. San Antonio class is a class of amphibious transport docks, also called a landing platform dock or LPD. USS San Antonio LPD-17, the lead ship of her class, was commissioned on the 14th of January 2006. The San Antonio class was designed to provide the US Navy and US Marine Corps with a modern, sea-based platform that's networked, survivable, and built to operate with 21st century transformational platforms, such as the MV-22 Osprey. The warships of this class are 684 feet long and 105 feet wide. The class is designed to be LO or low observable and has features that reduce radar cross-section. It's capable of transporting U.S. Marines, amphibious vehicles, conventional landing craft, and rotary aircraft, 
This means it has the capability to support amphibious assault, special operations, or expeditionary warfare missions. The warship of this class also provides a high-quality command and control capability and improved interoperability between U.S. forces and partners in the region. It is packed with different kinds of sensors. The ship's enclosed main mast consists of two large eight-sided structures. The mast houses the radar and communications components like antenna and has a hybrid frequency selective surface. The ship's radar's package consists of an ITT AN SPS 48E 3D air search radar operating at C and D band. Lockheed Martin's AN APQ 9B surface surveillance and tracking radar operating at I band. Raytheon's AN SPS 64V9 navigation radar operating at I band and two Northrop Grumman Norden systems AN SPS 73 surface search radars operating at I band. The San Antonio design was originally supposed to have two 8 cell Mark 41 vertical launch system arrays VLS. The idea was to pack each of the 16 VLS cells with a quad pack of RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missiles ESSM, surface to air missiles. This is being re-examined to add Tomahawk cruise missiles to support Marines ashore with little modification to the combat system. Currently, these ships are armed with two rolling airframe missile RAM, launchers as well as a pair of turreted 30 mm automatic cannons for close-in defense. Naval Strike Missiles or NSM is a potent anti-ship missile. It is the upgrade of Kongsberg's Penguin short to medium range anti-ship guided missile. The missile has a range of 100 miles or 185 kilometers. NSM is capable of high subsonic speeds. It has sea skim mode by which it travels very close to the surface making it hard to detect and intercept. It is also designed to maneuver to avoid enemy defenses. It is equipped with 276 pounds or 125 kilograms multi-purpose blast fragmentation warhead. NSM features an imaging IR seeker which is complemented by inertial GPS navigation. The missile also has a built-in database of representative ship types to distinguish between intended targets and other objects. Importantly, it can be used for taking out land targets too. There have been several deliberations in the past about the feasibility of installing the Mark 41 vertical launch system or other weapon systems on the San Antonio class warships. The USS Portland was outfitted with a 150 kilowatt laser system and is currently in the process of testing. This is a significant upgrade from the 30 kilowatt laser weapon system or laws that the US Navy tested on the amphibious transport dock ship USS Ponce about five years ago. So there's been constant effort to improve the capabilities of these platforms. The addition of naval strike missile will provide the San Antonio with the capability to defend themselves against naval threats. It remains to be seen how things pan out in the coming days. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.